All right, guys, let's get started. Um, so here's the agenda for today. Um, first two points are, as usual, GitHub milestones. Let's check um, and make sure that everybody's working on uh, the issues they think they're working on. So it's just worth uh, reviewing. So right now, uh, according to this, uh, let's see. So Elastic Matter support is getting worked on. Generator configurations is getting worked on. Prepare and publish a paper about physics simulation is getting worked on. Yeah, that's as far as I know as well. Get numerical data from experimental videos. It's getting worked on. We sent an email about that. Move wiki from Google Code to GitHub. Hmm. In truth, that's not really happening right now, and that's on me. Um, so let me just uh, go ahead and remove that. OK. And uh, that's, let's see. And then there's a second page. Oh, to find out each neuropeptide is created and stored in the neuron cell. To find the known neuropeptides for each neuron. Solve the correct PCI SPH integration problem. Is that not solved? Um, how do you mean? Uh, well, I don't know. This is on Sergey. Sergey, is this really not finished yet? Or it sounds like this might have been something we've already done. Uh, I think so, yes. You think it is done? Yeah, yeah. Can you send me a link? Yes. All right. Yes. That's the link. Oh, hey, Alex. Nice. No worries. All right. Yeah, so what do you think? Is that... I'd like to close it if it's, uh, if it's actually done. Yeah, it's done. Nice. All right. Closed. All right, awesome. Um, and then, let's see. Last map support generates configurations. Oh, that got me back to the first page. OK. Uh, define the known neuropeptides for each neuron. Yep, that's being worked on. Wrap JLEMs. Well, wrap, wrapping per se is dull. Writing the API for it so that we can use it in Geppetto is what I'm actually working on at the moment. So that is ongoing. But I can close this one and create a better. Gonna take a picture. It's a phone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so uh, can I just close it right now? Uh, yeah. That yes. I but I want to open another one to keep track of the remaining thing. And okay. uh, but I don't want to go into too much detail because JLens itself has its own separate uh, GitHub repository and just to not right. duplicate uh, all the tasks. I I will link. That repository and the issues of that repository in this issue that I open in Open World, so that uh, we can go and look at that one without duplicating everything. Right. Okay, that's fine. Um, how about this one for the latest version of PCI SPH algorithm? That's on Giovanni. Well, that's ongoing. That's a. Uh... In theory, it's, it's all ported, but um, before I close it, I want to make sure that, that the Elastic Matter stuff works. OK. Do you want to create a new issue? There, 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 is, already, there, is, there, is, there is already a new issue. Um, OK. So I just don't want to close, I just don't wanna close that until, uh, because basically, the porting is done. But if it doesn't work, then it's not really done. So okay. what's, the, yeah. what's the number of the new issue? If you look at the milestone, it's it's under there. Like you can click on the milestone up there. Right? Um, I can try and tell you, but I don't have it in front. That's of fine. Me. That's fine. Let's see. I can see it here. Okay. Number of issues. Uh, yeah. You see the one I'm working on. Elastic matter support. Elastic matter support. Yeah. Okay. Waiting for completion of seventy-five. Right. Yeah, it's it's not ideal, um, but I mean. That's okay. Next time we'll try to just have atomic issues. But that one was basically a bit of an umbrella task. Yep. Fine. Okay. Let's see here. And then the problem is that it's ongoing because as 
as Andre and Sergey are working on the um, on the PCA SPH, I, I port the new changes, right? So that's why it's still open. Right, right, right. Let's see. Yeah, this one has actually gotten quite far. Um, hmm. I think we need to check in on this again. Okay, um, so then the last one is create worky page that has instruction for help with synapse marking. Uh, yeah, this is not being worked on right now. That's being done in collaboration with Steve Cook, but I want his um, taking a slower pace. Okay, so this is what's according to this. This is what's being worked on. Um, so if you are not, if you do not have a piece of this somewhere. Um, Find uh, an issue that matches more closely to stuff you're working on, and hit the working label on it. For the, uh, I, I, I'm having some. I'm a bit confused. My, uh, I see fourteen open milestones. Um, right. I'm a bit confused. What you're seeing over there, I don't understand. Okay, so yeah, so this this interface can is is very uh, concise, so it can be a little confusing. So yeah. um, basically, the labels on this side, this means select only things that have the label that's marked. So yes. if, if I click X off this, then I'm going to have the entire list. And you can see that it's the entire list because it says no active filters, use a sidebar to filter issues. Okay. So, um, so that's one way in which this gets filtered. Another way in which it gets filtered is if you go to the milestones here, then under milestones, yep. you want to find like a specific thing, like muscle cell model matches output. Yep. You go to browse issues. Now it's again you go back to the same interface, but now it's filtered by milestone. This is only under the milestones. Um, and then if if you're ever in doubt, in general, you can always do a search here for a number um, if you want, like that one for example, fourteen, um, or you can search by name, um, muscle. And will still show up here. Um, and the last thing is, uh, there's this thing here: everyone's issues versus issues that are just assigned to you, uh, issues created uh, by you and mentioning you. So if you're only on assigned to you, you might see there's only seven as opposed to everyone's issues with 56. Um, last thing, you can also sort by the order in which things are submitted or the order in which things are updated. Um, so here's this one, yeah, highly simplified proof. This one apparently was just updated, which is great. So now if you want to add the working tab tag to it, if this is the thing you're working on, you go into the issue, you go to the labels here, and then here's where you can actually apply the label. Okay. So now I click that. Now that's it. I don't even have to hit save. It's already saved. Okay. All right. This one. All right. So anyway, uh, that's uh, that's at the top here. Um, Wiki honestly has not been worked on in a while. We need to, we need to redouble our efforts on that one. But um, uh, anyway, let's update. What is uh, do, do we know what's left on the Google Code Wiki? Because, like, uh, to my knowledge, everything has been moved over. It just needs to be reworked. I'm basically itching to get rid of the Google Code repository altogether. Because people are still still landing on the Google Code, and it's like confusing to an extent that I cannot even quantify. Uh, well, let's see. I think that we moved everything everything over. Um, no, I mean the thing is, there's still. I mean, let's just have a look, right? So we go here. Basically, there was a. This is the the outline, the new outline. Yeah. And then There's a bunch the of stuff at the bottom, right? All these old, all these old pages, they've been moved. Well, they're here, I, but, but they're in they a, need to, yeah, they need to be reworked, right? They need to be reworked. One, and then two, I'm not sure that this is 100 percent of the pages. So, um, uh, so I think some of them might have got dropped, uh, basically. 
-hmm. Yeah, so we just need to make sure that at least that, and then we'll just get rid of the Google Code one yeah. without like reworking all of them and then waiting for that to get rid of the Google Code. Like, as, as, as long as we move them over, all of them, then we can just close the Google Code one. Right. So, so we we'll just need to understand what's missing, just copy paste the crap out of that, and then like, we just close it. Because it's like it's been going on for a year. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite that long, but it's it is long. Um, so all right. Um, Maybe we need the task uh, to 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 identify what's missing or something. Guaranteed that all pages at um, uh, exist. Let's see, all pages from Google Code exist. On GitHub, um, and then each page uh, below the outline on the home page needs to be moved into its appropriate spot, and then um, each page needs to be fixed, uh, particularly to each. Old page needs to be reviewed and fixed, particularly for images that got dropped. Yeah, I think this would be like uh, orders of magnitude easier if every, everybody would like look at their own pages. Right. Because well, we need, uh, we need, otherwise, uh, it's one guy looking at everybody's stuff, and it's uh, kind of overwhelming. And that's why it didn't get done. Yeah. So, do you have a suggestion for a new strategy for that? Do you want me? Can I assign you to well, this? Well, I would just I would just call uh, like every every one of us to check if they have stuff left in Google Code, and if they if they have it and it doesn't get done, just delete the crap out of it. <laughs> that's that's one way to do it. <laughs> Can I assign you to this? So, yeah. But I, all I'll do is just send a bunch of emails, and if nobody does anything, I'll just delete everything. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's, that's the harsh way to do it. So everyone, you're on notice. Um, so um, There should be local backups. I mean, if, if somebody, as long as somebody does have a copy, a local copy of the code at some particular point in time, then it can always be traced back. Yeah, yeah. It's not so much about code, Patrick. It's it's more about the the. Um, I'm I'm pretty confident that there's no code left on the old Google Code stuff, um, because like I'm pretty sure that's the case. But we can double check. But I'm I'm more m most worried about the wiki pages. Okay. Uh, okay. A lot of work went into those, uh, like for example, the scripts. Uh, that we did for um, converting from the Blender into the NeuroML, all that stuff was was fairly uh, well documented, and uh, we just need to make sure that all the stuff is brought into GitHub. It doesn't need to be pretty or anything, just as long as we don't lose the content. Uh, yeah. But like, if we don't do it like this, we, it, it'll never get done. Yeah, that's fair. All right, so um, moving on. And so basically, yeah. If, if there's if there are things which aren't marked with uh, working, please uh, please add them. That's the one thing I, I don't know. Okay. So it's it's surprising to me that the John White ha hangout happened since the last time we met, um, but it's true. Um, if you did not get a chance to see it, here's the link. Um, it was pretty awesome. And if I can share with you the best part uh, right now, it happened. It comes at the end. It's worth waiting for. So um, let's see if, uh, if, if you can. There's a link straight to that. If if you go to Twitter, we tweeted a link straight to that exact uh, moment. Yeah. Actually, let's see if I can use the uh, the YouTube app here uh, to do this. Or if this is going to be a a disaster. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that working for you guys? Let's see. Mm, I don't know. You're looking for troubles. <laughs> No, it's not working. Okay, never mind. It's not crash. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, let me just play this part here. So, so you need to have, you know, like a note. It starts with Giovanni's question. 
starting from the motor system first, connecting the motor. Uh, uh, and basically, the, the goal of the project is to simulate, obviously, starting <coughs> small steps, starting from the motor system first, connecting the motor neurons to the muscle cells, get this thing to, to crawl. This has been done to, to an extent already by some of the people we are working with uh, in Russia, but we are basically aiming to do that in greater detail. But the, the end goal of the project is to simulate all the cells, uh, all the neurons. And uh, so what do you think about this? Because like we hear a lot of uh, skepticism from the field of biology. But some people say, well, this is uninteresting because uh, you cannot work on population as you can do for, uh, with the human brain. Or like you have the problem that you need to be more precise. So if you don't know exactly what the parameters are for all of these neurons, since they are so few, then it doesn't make sense what you're doing. Obviously, we, we beg to differ, but I'm really interested in your opinion. Oh, I, I think what you're trying to do is a tremendous project. It, it, you know, it's something that the, uh, I've dreamed about over the years and, and um, would love to have been involved with it. Um, because I, I think that you know, with something like a nervous system, you've got to sort of ask yourself, well, what? The, what constitutes an understanding of how it works, you know, particularly when you have a sort of complex array of, 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 of neurons. And you, know, you could say that, you know, I talk about circuit loops and uh, something acts as a sort of a spatial differentiator or something like that. But, but you know, you don't really know. But, um, but the, the thing about simulating something is, is it, 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 it it puts constraints of, about how it can work, and it, and it shows how it, how, it, how it could work. It doesn't absolutely show that that's what's happening. But if you can simulate, um, basically you're simulating the whole uh, nervous system here, um, this is the goal as I understand it, anyway, but to, you know, uh, presumably to the case where you have a stimulus and then your uh, simulated worm will respond to that stimulus in, in a way that you can compare with, with, with a so anyway, you get the idea. Um, I think hopefully you guys all heard that all right. Yeah, I heard yes, but when you are in full screen, <laughs> you, the video. you didn't see oh, the video. No, me neither, and I wasn't in full screen. Could uh, you just send? A, could you send the link, uh, Stephen? Because I'd quite quite like to watch the whole thing actually. Yeah, the link is it's in the, the blog. On the blog. Okay. And, and there's also it's also in the blog. So. Um, you. Anyway, you heard it, so that's good. Um, sorry about the video. Yeah. Um, so he's uh, he's a fan, uh, and uh, he also sent me email afterwards, and he said that he really enjoyed himself. So um, it was very cool. So we are um, blessed by the father of the Connectome uh, to carry forth. Um, if that's not motivation, I don't know what it is. If you like, if you actually you watch it till the end, it will say something like when we're like closing words. Is saying that is be that is very happy. Uh, it will be very happy to be part of the project as an advisor or something like that. So like that that was very nice. Very good. Okay, so let's let's keep going as I'm sort of uh, dominating this whole thing with my, with my updates. So um, next two updates. So I was uh, I was in Boston last week, um, and uh, actually Giovanni and Matteo were on Boston too. Um, so um, as part of uh, Open Worm relationship building, um, I met with a couple of folks at Harvard. Uh, one of them was Quan Wen. And if that name doesn't uh, pop out at you in terms of who that is, uh, let me uh, share this paper. So he's, Quan Wen is the first author of this proprioceptive coupling with motor neurons drive C elegance forward locomotion paper, which is uh, which has some familiar names, Andrew Liefer, um, William Schaefer. Um, um, Aravanathan Samuel, who's the, the Harvard guy um, with the Colbert system for the worm tracker. Um, Mitra Chislovsky, who updated the, uh, the connectome. And, um, and Christopher Fang Yen, who we haven't talked a lot about, but who does um, quite a bit of, of good work um, in this field as well. So, and Mei Zhen, who we've also talked to uh, a bit in the past about collaborating. So, Juan's awesome. Um, and this paper is awesome. 
Um, and I, it's just another advertisement to go check it out. But um, he was very supportive as well of the project. Um, we pointed him at, um, at the project. He's very excited. He happens to be more of a, a theoretical guy too. So, um, and so this paper was a result of sort of three years of work of, of postdoc. He, I think he was with Mitra Chiflowski before at Chenalia Farms too. So um, anyway, this um, you know the data behind this paper is pretty important probably for for validating the model. So um, we have a, a connection to him, and if we want to reach out to him, I think he will respond. So um, so that's very cool. Then we also met with, um, and by we actually in this case I mean me, um, met with uh, this gentleman, Michael Hendricks, who's. Also at Harvard, he's going to be taking a position uh, in Canada at which institution right now? I apologize, it it, um, it uh, I, I forget. But um, he's doing work also with calcium imaging. Um, he has he has an interesting result with uh, with C. elegans where um, they uh, they've actually looked at the calcium imaging of a single neuron R I A in the head and they can see that um, when different parts of that cell light up, uh, it seems to be correlated with the position of the head. So it looks like in one neuron kind of has a representation of the position of the head, whether it's, it's dorsal or ventral, depending on whether like the, the, the top or the bottom of the cell is active uh, at a time. So that's also pretty interesting. And, and he's also pretty supportive. Um, I don't know what trying to do. So that was good. And then, um, Let's see. And then the last meeting, which I, I emailed you guys about yesterday with uh, Ev Yamini, this was um, pretty random in terms of he reached out to me after seeing the, the Wired UK article posting. And he's been working for three years um, at Bill Schaefer's lab in the UK. And they've amassed this uh, huge database of videos of wild type and mutants. Uh, worms crawling around, and they've segmented it, and they've turned it into HDF5, and they've done all these metrics on it, and all these statistics on it. And um, he's the um, is a co-author on uh, not that one, this one. Dictionary of behavioral motifs reveals clusters of genes affecting uh, C. elegans locomotion. So this is a follow-on to the eigenworms paper, basically. Um, but done even more completely. And um, in fact, they find something more like six eigenworms when you consider um, when you consider them crawling around on uh, plates with food as opposed to the four eigenworms when they're crawling around on plates that don't have food. Basically, the extra two describe the 90% uh, of the variance that uh, also includes them foraging. And, uh, and so he showed me a lot more behind what's what's behind that database, and um, it seems really good. So for things like validating the model, like hours and hours of worms crawling around, uh, seems like a pretty good training set for us. Um, and he's willing to, to help contribute that data. So it's, uh, it's pretty great. Um, and we'll continue to talk to him, obviously, uh, getting down to the details of, of getting a hold of these, these data sets. It's sometimes be challenging, but it looks like there's there's even dot .mat files that are linked on the site that I sent over email, so it's pretty promising too. So those are all things that uh, you know you should all keep in mind, and um, if you need those references, we can reach out to them. But um, it was a pretty good week for the project. Any questions? All right. I uh, will take that as my sign to let you all talk. Um, well, actually, just one other thing, not directly related to Open Worm, but um, speaking of uh, C. Elegans researchers, did you see the new job that uh, Corey Bergman has yeah. just got? Yes, yes. Uh, when, you want to tell everybody about it? Um, OK, well, I mean, uh, I'm, I assume most people might have heard that uh, Obama announced the $100 million for the Brain Initiative yesterday which uh, may increase in the future, but uh, that is a large-scale initiative to link a number of neuroscience, existing neuroscience initiatives together, but um, it could quite easily lead to a much larger initiative 
some people have been talking about uh, $3 billion for this uh, brain brain activity lab uh, project, which could be the human brain project in Europe. Uh, but this initial $100 million, I believe, is uh, going to set up uh, set the direction of that project. And there's a team which has been set up uh, by members of the NIH, and but the two people who are leading it, I don't remember one of them, but uh, the other is uh, Corey Bargman, who's one of the main um, uh, C. Elgin's researchers in the States at the moment. I don't know if you've, have you met her or spoken to her? I have. About Open you have, okay. Briefly. Did you go down well? Uh, yes, I, I have not yet gone into the details um, of the project with her, um, largely because I want to be sure that we're, we've got, um, you know, we've got some good results to show, but um, you can persuade me otherwise. Um, basically, I told her, I mentioned the project, and she wanted to, she wanted to hear more about it, and that's kind of where we've, where we've left it because I'm a coward. Um, but, uh, but um, I think we should, it's probably not a bad time to reach out uh, to her. I would say that a lot of people might be reaching out to her. So. <laughs> right, well, there's that too. Um, I mean, it, it's a good sign, though, that uh, C. elegans won't necessarily uh, be popped over and ignored, um, like in other initiatives, and uh, it may well be included in the yeah in the plans for actually uh, building and uh, understanding the brain. Yeah. So the more that we're doing in terms of matching, you know, what we're doing with simulations to real data, I think the better the better it'll be. Uh, the easier it will be to make the case to s biologists who. Um, you know, are inclined to support computational work, but want to see the real, you know, meat. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can get there, even with the muscle cell stuff, um, sooner rather than later. Um, so even the results that we'll show at CNS, I, I'm hoping will be something that will be, uh, you know, able to, to go outside of the computational community. But, but yes, um, that is exciting and. Um, there is also a, a, um, a C. Elegans meeting that's an international meeting at UCLA uh, coming up in end of June, um, where I expect a lot of these folks are going to are going to be you know, another opportunity. Meta Cohen, I met her there last year. I met Paul Sternberg there last year, or not not last year, two years ago. Um, so it's another opportunity to meet people in person and kind of uh, talk to them about this stuff, but. Yeah, no, that is exciting about about Corey. That's really great. She's a great scientist. All right. But by the way, that initiative has to pass through Congress uh, as part of the the budget. So it's only a proposal right now. So just uh, in terms of the inside Beltway politics, um, there. I I so just as one comment, there they have uh, questions of the press secretary every day. Uh, the White House press secretary, where the reporters ask things. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and I was watching on C-SPAN yesterday, which is this uh, channel where they they post all this stuff. And uh, and there were a few skeptical reporters who were like, so brain initiative, how are you going to get that passed through Congress? And the press, press secretary said they'd stand up for it. They said it wasn't going to be extra spending on top of the sequester. So that means they're going to take $100 million out of something else, uh, according to them. So I don't know. We'll see, but I'm excited. I'm glad that it's it's moving forward. It's obviously great for all this stuff. Hmm. All right, so let's uh, let's let's go through, folks. Um, so Giovanni, want to go first? Yeah. So I'm still working on the SPH stuff because uh, last update I gave basically the liquid um, particles are fine working with the boundary particles, but the porting for the elastic matter stuff has been done already by me, but uh, I haven't got a chance to actually test it with uh, the scene. Uh, so the plan is to go back and take the code that Andre put in, recently put into the C++, C++ version and try to generate a scene with elastic matter and see if that works. Uh, my hope is that it works, but that's just wishful thinking. Um, so basically, but in, I mean, in, in truth, I, I didn't get a chance to do much over the last two weeks because I was traveling and uh, my computer broke down. So my hard drive died, which is basically the modern uh, the dog ate my homework. Uh, 
model version of that, but it's true. <laughs> uh, so basically, I didn't get the chance to do much on this other than looking at code. Uh, there's some a few other ad updates. Uh, so you might remember when we said uh, the Open World Browser iOS app, we just um, arranged to get the code over into the Open World repository. So all the code is now there for everybody to see, and it's actually nice. It's the first time that I see uh, an Open World, uh, sorry, um, an iOS app open sourced. I'm, I'm sure there are others. There are others, but I've never seen one, so I was pretty happy about that. Does, uh, does Apple like that? I don't care, to be honest. If they don't like it, they might ask us to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I doubt that we'll find out, but I, I think they do. I think that there's no problem at all. Uh, that's what I think. Okay. But I actually didn't look into it. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, right. why, would Apple, why would Apple have any issue with sharing code that we wrote? If I don't know. It's, it's, a, a, yeah, it's an Xcode project. I don't know. There might be reasons, but I, don't, I actually don't know. So it's, it's a good thing to think about, but I, just, I don't know. I, I, I trust that we, we've been developing this with uh, Rich Stoner. He's basically a developer who put this together, and it didn't say... I didn't warn us or anything, and he's done a lot of iOS development before. I know he has open source a lot of stuff, but uh, it didn't say anything about it. Uh, we, we can look into it, but uh, I don't think it's a concern for us. That worst case scenario, we just take it away. Uh, and then, yeah, another update. Sorry? Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Uh, another update is that there's a new version, which is supposed to be the 1.0 version, coming out soon with a bunch of bug fixes and stuff that should be nicer. Uh, just driving that, uh, spend time driving that. And that's pretty much everything for me. Cool. Good. Mike, back from Brazil. Yeah, so um, since the last Hangout, I've only actually had one or two work days, so not not very much work has been done, obviously. Um, my plan from now on is to concentrate on the, obviously concentrate on the integration of electrophysiology and mechanics now that contraction has been um, advanced quite significantly by Andre and Sergey. Uh, I just sent Andre a preliminary email with uh, with questions and asking for asking for that uh, model which he showed us with the contracting blob uh, to be placed on GitHub so that I can compile it and start the initial work on integration with a simple muscle uh, simple electrophysiological model of a muscle cell. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff I need to do um, updates to pyramidal to reflect latest changes in libnirml quite. Uh, Quite a few things need to be done, but obviously I'm quite excited to get this going. So um, I anticipate spending more time than I should on it. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Um, on that on that note, actually, um, uh, Sergey, do you uh, know when it will be possible to have the SPH model which supports contraction up on GitHub so I can play with it? Uh, it it's right there, I think. Okay. I think it's it's I I seen Andre pushed uh, an update just maybe ten days ago or something. If you look at the activity, I it should be there. I saw that, but the commit message was minor changes, so I just assumed I foolishly assumed that. Well, okay. I looked into the um, the commits, uh, and there's actually code to send. It's still uh, there is still little bug. We still working on it and try to fix it, but it's little bug, I don't know, maybe it's not important for you, for your works. Okay, I'll get going with that then. Uh, another question, I already asked this to Andre, so uh, by email an hour ago, so um, perhaps you, you don't know the answer, or you don't prefer not to answer this, but um, the um, model that we saw two weeks ago had this issue with um, after the contraction was complete, the fluid would begin to oscillate quite a lot. 
Um, and Andre said he was he had already thought of a way to address this issue. Do you know anything about that or? Mm, no, I don't know. Did you know what do you know what I'm talking about by by oscillate a lot? The 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 model we saw after, when it relaxed, it would begin to vibrate, and and and. Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. He said me yeah it's a problem and. Uh, uh, he showed me that he uh, working on it and okay. uh, I think there are no results yet. Okay. Cool, yeah, so now since if that's online I'm gonna try and compile it on my machine okay. and um, continue continue with that. See, see, see if I can get even if I can get the very first integration of <clears throat> of a neural neural model with that. It will be even if it's a proof of principle. I think it will be the first time anyone's done that. So that will be really neat. Okay. Nice. I linked to the uh, to the change. It lo it looks like there was a change before the uh, minor uh, minor mm -hmm. updates that uh, makes sense. Kicked off the uh, yeah, kicked off the, muscle, the fibers. So. Okay. All right. Um, let's keep going. So, uh, Mateo, let's do. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> we were just looking at the link that Giovanni posted on the, oh, yes. uh, on the chat. Uh, so, uh, I was also uh, traveling bar on holidays for the past two weeks, so didn't get much time. Uh, the, the one thing I I'm resuming working on is the JLM's API, which is the issue I created uh, at the start of the meeting on GitHub, which is basically just to quickly summarize it for folks that uh, don't know exactly what it is. So JLAMS is the um, uh, Java reference implementation for LAMS, which supports simulation of single compartments. Uh, and the strategy that we're trying to use is to, first of all, wrap that uh, as a bundle for Geppetto and then get that to basically run single compartment simulation in Geppetto, which will be, a, so NeuroML2 is based on LAMS, so getting that to work will mean that we'll be able to run NeuroML files on Geppetto. And, um, but in order to get there, I'm, uh, creating, defining, and implementing an API so that uh, we can access uh, uh, the JLM stuff. And that is what I'm currently working on, what I'll be working on in, for the next while. And uh, the fixing Geppetto JVM crash, last I sent the email with the, it's actually not a crash anymore after uh, Olivier worked uh, on the um, on the kernel, but uh, not on the kernel, but on Java CL, sorry. But it is not compiling, and I sent him an email before holidays, and he didn't get back to me since he was also interested on the sources for the iOS app for the browser. I might take the chance just to point him at it since we released it and ask him again. How about the compilation error? All right. Good. So let's see. Next on the list is Alex, who has no microphone and no video. Um, I did forward the little, I did forward the uh, latest to the list. So um, Alex, do you want to just type in the chat if there's anything uh, new other than that? Um, Mike and Alex and I have a meeting set up for. Friday to talk a little bit about that stuff, but um, you want to hit the chat there, Alex, if there's anything else? Okay. Uh, he may be typing. Um, nope, nothing in particular is discussed on Friday. Okay, good. So that's ongoing. Uh, Tim, uh, let me know as well that he, he might not be in, but, um, but I hope you saw the mail that I forwarded. Um, to the list, he has converted, um, uh, you know, what he's been working on to an SQL database uh, form, so that uh, it can kind of be the, the master representation of our data um, in, a, in tables rather than in spreadsheets, which 
um, is great for humans looking at data, but not so great for having sort of um, a non-redundant representation of all the data that we uh, that we're storing. So, um, so more on that uh, when he uh, comes next time. Let's go ahead to Porg. Um, okay, uh, not too much specific on Open Worm in the last two weeks. Um, that's mine from previously. Yeah, um, so I haven't gotten around again to looking at the uh, updated, updating the NeuroConstruct project there, but um, it's on my list of to-dos, um, and there's plenty that can be done there to just tidy it up a bit and um, uh, make it easier to import the connections from the spreadsheet. So I'll try to look at that before the next meeting. Uh, what I have been doing is looking at some of the neuromel models on open source brain, including the muscle cell model, and trying to update them to the latest version of neuromel. So the muscle cell model, even though it's wrong, and the channel densities are wrong, and there's a problem with the inactivation in one of the channels, at least it runs, again, in the latest version of neuromel. Um, and there is w one tool that I'm working on at the moment, which is closely related to JLEMS, which we're calling JNeuroML, or JNML, uh, which I can send the mail about, uh, around about. But basically what it does is it gathers all of the various different bun uh, bundles and packages from uh, LEMS uh, in Java and NeuroML. So the NeuroML API, which was generated from the schema, uh, it gathers together some of the examples, some of the definitions into one, a single Java jar, which can then be used to either uh, run a LEMS model to validate NeuroML, to uh, convert NeuroML into other formats. And the plan is to try to make it as easy as possible to distribute that. Uh, and then you can just have one single executable, which can be used to run that muscle cell model, for example, to validate NeuroML to, or, or to convert it into other formats. Um, and hopefully I'll get around to sending a mail about that now, and then people can play with that jar. There is, uh, it's basically based on about eight different, or probably six different um, repositories on GitHub. Uh, but once it's all compiled together into a single jar, it's uh, much easier to work with. Cool. All right, very good. So is there a repository for JNeuroML somewhere? Uh, there is. Um, it's neuromel slash JNeuroML, slash JNeuroML, which we may send around at the moment. Um, but it's in flux at the moment. So I mean, you can have a look there. Um, I think you're about to send it. Actually, this one. Okay. Let me chat. Yeah, so um, uh, the idea would be that uh, if you go down to get NeuroML, there'll be this nice, easy, executable uh, get NeuroML, which will pull in all of the, um, yes, get NeuroML.py, which will pull in all of the appropriate um, Check out or clone all of the uh, GitHub repositories, build, build build each of them with Maven, if appropriate, and create this jar for you. But I plan also just to make a simple uh, executable, a uh, simple one location where you can pull down the jar and then run it from there. Um, and as I say, I'll try to send a mail around about that. Um, the other bits I've been working on is exporting models in LEMS into SBML. Uh, importing SPML into LEMS and exporting to other things like XPP and Brian. So all of this functionality will be in this uh, JNeuroML executable. So with just one command line, you can um, access, hopefully, most of this functionality. Very good. All right, so exciting stuff. Um, keep us posted. Um, all right, Sergey. Welcome back. Uh, uh, not too much. Uh, what I did uh, on this two week. Uh, uh, 
uh, I tried you're getting, to... You're getting, a, you're getting your degree. <laughs> oh. What, right? Yeah. Which is important and good and should be taking up most of your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I tried to help Andre find this bug with contraction and oscillation, but it hasn't any good results. Uh, that's all. Uh, also, yeah. also, I think. Uh, pretty close to create uh, this uh, configuration generator, uh, but I need to test it, and uh, I think I can put it uh, to, to the repository and uh, uh, improve this uh, in future. Nice. Cool. All right. Okay. Very good. And uh, everything going all right with uh, the degree? <laughs> oh, I uh, reading my uh, thesis and uh, it's all of time. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it it always takes the longest chunk of time, way longer than you think. And that's how it was for me. Anyway, so. All right, very good. So we got through all this stuff. Um, looks like there's uh, another uh, topic to discuss. Maybe we should uh, just throw it up on the screen here. I see you guys have been uh, talking already. So it looks like there's a related project that has popped up. I was looking at it on my phone briefly. Um, so it's the S SI Elegans or C Elegans. Very clever. Um, and it looks like it's an EU project. And it looks like they're hiring folks. So it looks like they're mainly focusing on hardware. Um, I've actually talked to somebody in Spain about doing hardware side stuff based on C. Elegans. I don't know if these are the same people, but no, these uh, are Italian. These are in Italy, so probably not. But I wonder no, if any of they're Irish, aren't they? Well, Irish, Irish and Italian. Italian. Irish and well, there's something Italian. Irish and Italian about the worm, but. Uh... <laughs> So anyway, it looks like it's just uh, it said it just started on April first. So <laughs> unless it's an April Fool's joke, uh, <laughs> it looks like this is running. But um, I was looking here at links actually, and, and uh, happily we are referenced multiple times. Oh, um, nice. Although we are linked, the Google code is linked sadly, um, and uh, it also calls us U.S. based, which is really not accurate. Um, but uh, it looks like it's got quite a, they've done quite a, a job of mining, uh, you know, the, 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 the information on uh, these sorts of projects. So that's, that's good. It looks like, I, I, I can only assume that they've been reading our stuff for background because a lot of this looks very familiar to me. But, um, but anyway, they do point to us. And, oh, look at that. They point to neuro, NeuroConstruct and, uh, ooh, the simulation framework and everything. Very ooh, good. What's where does that link go? I it think Google, Google code. code. Yeah. Fuck Google code. Yeah, we just reach out to them <laughs> and, uh, and tell them to at the very least point to the yeah, I mean, Open it, World website. Yeah. I, mean, I think it would be good to uh, just get them on board as soon as possible to... Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, otherwise, I mean, press, making personal contact would be quite good. Yes. So... For who's read this, can someone explain to me precisely what they're doing? It seems, um, okay, from what I've been reading, they're, interested, they're obviously very interested in C. elegans. They're obviously hardware guys, not biologists. They uh, seem to be wanting to use FB, FPGAs. Uh, what else? It's not, they're not actually saying that they want to run a simulation of C. elegans anywhere, obviously, though. Am I wrong? Or? Uh, well, uh, reading here on the project page, it looks like they're saying each of the 302 neurons will be represented by individual field programmable gate array modules, each of them being independently and dynamically programmable with a user-specific and parameterized neuronal response model through a user-friendly neuron model submission and configuration facility or through selection from a library of predefined and tested neuron models. Um, and it goes on. So it looks like they're mainly focused on the neurons, which we are too right now, mm -hmm. um, but obviously we want to go beyond. So it says, let's see, while C. elegans, XI elegans restricts itself to the emulation of the C. elegans nervous system, underlying the concepts of universal application, 
and will constitute a generalizable framework from the universal working principle of nervous system function can be induced. Uh, more importantly, we'll lay the foundation for exploring and refining new neuromimetic computational concepts, provide a blueprint for the design of biologically inspired brain life parallel processing hardware architectures that are orthogonal to current von Neumann type machines. Okay. Well, I'm supportive. I think so that's obviously pretty great. This, this can obviously tie in very well with our project if they if they do get sort of a neural network and they're interested in examining its effect on a simulated body this is this is obviously something where us and them can work together probably as things currently stand probably would be able to help them more than them us but i think sort of opening a communication with them probably be quite wise i'm surprised they haven't contacted us actually yeah. Uh, well, again, I'll see if this. Well, I found them. Um, I found them. Um, I found the project because they followed us on Twitter. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. But uh, that's kind of it's interesting what Mike points out that they are hiring, for instance, uh, people with a PhD in electrical engineering. Mm. So, the biological background looks like it's going to be missing somehow. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, it, it does. So when I've talked to folks on, from the hardware side, um, in the hardware story, actually, let me just say a couple of things and see if anybody, um, if it jogs anything in anybody's memory. So um, when I first got to grad school, I worked on a VLSI project of implementing Hodgkin-Huxley-based neurons in in um, in hardware. Um, we started by designing it in a like a CAD chip design system, a, sp a spice type system, and demonstrated that we could get it to work. Um, uh, but there's many different uh, many different opinions on what the best way to implement neurons in hardware is, ranging from you know IBM's approach. I don't even know how hardware based that is. There's uh, Quabena uh, at Stanford. Uh, so there's there's a hardware um, there's a hardware group that's focusing on neurons there, and then. Um, most recently, when I spoke to the gentleman from Spain, well, I need to see if he's related to this project or not, um, I basically said, you know, um, uh, it's great to do this stuff in hardware. I think that it would, you know, speed up uh, some of the functions potentially of doing calculations, but at the end of the day, um, you'll need to be loading uh, the simulation parameters from somewhere. And that's really what we're defining in NeuroML. So I've consistently uh, encourage people to basically implement a NeuroML reader, uh, so that uh, you know it's it's FPGA is is programmable uh, with software, so you can tell the gates what to do, but they have to know you know they have to have some basis for how to ground their um, you know ground their parameters. So it comes back to like the NeuroML representation that we have of these neurons um, would be the thing that folks would read in and then tell their chip to to run. So um, it's the only sensible way that I can think of that uh, you know they would be able to set the parameters correctly. They don't have any just because it's in hardware doesn't make it any magically better at or more accurate for doing a simulation. And as you point out, it, it doesn't um, help them figure out what the biological parameters are. So all the things that we're still doing, got to you know do optimization to find the right parameters, got to define it all in XML, got to use open standards, all, all that is still you know derived from this. And I could imagine that they would. You know, currently be looking at the NeuroML representation that we have and wanting to you know implement it. So if they implement a NeuroML reader into hardware, that would be fantastic. I think everybody would that would be a huge win for everybody. Um, and if, if it ran it faster than we could run it in software, then even better. Um, I'd hope that they would you know open source the um, you know their design. But even if they don't, um, yeah, it's great. Uh, there is already an initiative in Cambridge. Um, Steve and Marsh, uh, that we spoke to a few times, they uh, are, have been associated with the Blue, sorry, the Spinnaker project, but they're developing their own um, hardware-based solution using FPGAs, and they also want to, uh, and they are in the process of developing a LEMS2 FPGA-based um, simulator. Uh, which would read in neuromel slash lems and implement it on their hard specifically on their hardware. So I mean, we have already contact with people there who ac actively want to do this, and hopefully, um, be one more person hard to um, uh, work specifically getting uh, 
NeuroML running on the these this FPGA based hardware. Cool. So I'll, I'll reach out to them and see you know if there's any way that we can help. But I do sort of see the the process of figuring out like how to implement the neurons on FPGA as being an important you know extra step. I, I don't in any way see it as you know competitive with what we're doing. So um, I'm going to see yeah. if there's anything we can do that. Yeah, I mean I, I think as soon as the sooner they see us as collaborator collaborators, friends slash people who can help are happy to help. Uh, rather than competition in any way, then the better. Yeah. Awesome. I couldn't agree more. Very good. So nice, nice find, Giovanni. Thanks for showing us that. No but problem. it is a big coincidence that it's Italians and Irish doing this as well. So it is. Yes. <laughs> Are we closer to worms or something? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not even going to go there. Um, Let's see. Uh, but there's there is another there's some other institutions involved, right? Uh, or is it just those just those two? It's so it's, it's an FP7. It's an FP7 project that tends to get folks from all over Europe. Let's see. There's Ulster. There's uh, and there's a dot .es. Okay, so there. That is Spain. Uh, oh, what is this? This, this looks that like it's a company thing. actually. Uh, yeah. So. Mm, it's a technical institute. Here, I'll go to English. Um, yeah, this is in Spain. Um, so there's so there's some folks from Spain working in this. And then, oh, let's see, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Probably why. Um, it's in San Sebastian. Yeah. And I've I've I keep coming across that. That place in sort of a computational neuroscience context, actually, uh -huh. sort of small conferences and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so that's something. And then, right, so Galway is the one. Yeah, that we saw. and then, and then, right, this is the Italian. So, so cool, very cool. All right, guys. Uh, anybody have anything else for the the good of the order today? All right. Well, thanks all for taking the time. We'll do this again in two weeks. Um, I will see you on the mailing list. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.